a dark and empty museum. A white guy talking softly, seriously, slowly. Clearly, this is a documentary from the 1990s. Give or take 34 years. But what you're about to see is not from the 1990s. What you're about to see is technology that could only exist in the future. Or the past, depending on when you're watching this video. Actually, statistically more likely to be in the future. Anyway, let's go check it out. The device in question is this, a 3D scanner. Welcome to the future. But also the present. Yes, sir, this little brick that I'm holding allows us to take a three-dimensional image, including texture, of just about anything. But unfortunately, something so complex is also quite complex. And so there's quite a lot of setup, starting with this. A calibration plate. So we're going to use that calibration plate to line up the inner workings of the scanner. Now remember that your primary goal here is to look as stupid as possible while you're lining up the calibration. Really just wave it around in whatever direction that it tells you to wave it. Don't be afraid to look like an intoxicated looney tune. Now lay down a flat surface with your positioning targets in random order. And now set the brightness to the desired setting. Now you want it to be mostly yellow. Like make sure that Dorothy can follow this thing to the Emerald City. And now your big sweet gasosaurus is ready to start the scanning process. Now the toy that Santa Claus got for us this Christmas is the Creoform Go Scan 3D. And it's quite a pretty piece of machinery. Now to start, hit the rectangular button on either side. We're only going to scan the targets at the start and then hit that same button again to turn it off. Look at you, you're so smart. And now we're going to create a clipping plane based on three selected targets. Now the reason that we do this is so that we don't have to edit out the background and post, it just is already edited out. It's not required, it's just far more convenient. Now before you start the next part, make sure that you have acquired texture selected. And at this point you're ready to scan the actual bone. Now make sure that you get as many sides as possible. And once again, don't feel afraid to look stupid, but also don't be afraid to look cool while trying to avoid tripping over wires. Like look at this twirl that I do. God, that looks so cool. Play it back. Now don't hurt yourself trying to look that cool. I mean, I know that's a high standard. It can be dangerous. Just make sure that you get all the angles that you need. Now just check it out. Look at the scan. Make sure you got all the angles that you need. And if you didn't, no big deal. Just continue scanning until you have every angle. And if you did get every angle that you need, you can stop the scan and proceed to finalize. Now finalizing basically just enhances the scan to the resolution that it scanned at. It just didn't show while it was scanning, it takes up too much memory. But you can actually decrease and increase the resolution as you please off to the side. And then once you're satisfied with the resolution that you've got, you move on to get rid of the floaters. Basically just little bits of things that the scanner picked up that weren't really there and that you don't really want part of the element that you're scanning. The best way to do this is to select the bone, then invert the selection to select everything that's not the bone and just delete. And now this half of the bone is ready so we can move on to start a new scan of the other side of the bone. Basically, you do this side the same as the other side, except you don't do anything differently. And now you've got your two sides, except they look like they're totally merged. So that's just not going to work out at all. But oh, there's a solution. You can do an automatic best fit alignment. This basically just automatically lines the two sides up based on points of similarity, but it doesn't always work, which we'll go over later. But it doesn't matter what your mother says, your father's right, what you've done so far isn't good enough. You've lined up the scans, but now you've got to merge them. Which I unfortunately forgot to record, for some reason. And, you know, honestly, the true and real reason is it's because I'm stupid. But luckily for all you greedy little goblins, I did do a live stream the other day which included it. So here I've included that here. So just watch and eat your porridge.
But ultimately, it's like 16th U.S. President Abraham Lincoln once said. Nobody's perfect. I got to work it again and again until I get it right. Many wise figures have said similar things. Equally relevant is this quote by Nobel Prize winning physicist Albert Einstein. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. But you don't have to be stupid to have struggles when dealing with 3D scans, so let's go through a few common ones. I mentioned earlier that not everything is going to automatically best fit a line. Sometimes the computer just can't recognize it. And so what do you do then? You do a manual alignment, and basically you have to select for the computer where the points of similarity are. Because they're opposite sides of the scan, I would recommend having the two sides flipped, uh, and then it takes at least three points selection for the computer to recognize the similarities. Now the next couple things that I would watch out for here are items that are just too small and putting multiple items down to scan at once. The big problem here is that the clipping plane just cuts out way too much of the fossil when it's so small. That's because the clipping plane has an error margin of about a millimeter. But then the other problem is that when you try to flip them over to scan the other side, the computer actually loses the tracking. And why did I do this? Again, it's because I'm stupid. Now the next major goof up you can make is that you just forget to hit the acquire texture box. And unfortunately there's no way to correct for this. If you forget to hit it and you've started scanning, you just unfortunately have to start a new scan. Unless you don't care about texture, in which case it's fine. And the final thing is that you just forgot to create a clipping plane before you started scanning. And that's not major, it's just a little inconvenient. Just go ahead and finish what you're doing. Keep doing that side of the scan and then create the clipping plane at the end. You'll have to finalize and it'll take a little extra time, but it doesn't matter. But what's the point of these 3D scans? I often get asked. Can you eat them? No, you can't eat them. Maybe you haven't tried hard enough. I assure you, I have tried as hard as a man can try. They cannot be eaten. They can, however, be 3D printed. 3D printed and used as demonstrations, educational materials in schools and in other areas where we would go to educate but don't want to bring our fossils. Because quite frankly, we don't trust you with our fossils. They can also be used for research like what I've been doing on this plesiosaur fossil, which looks nothing like the one in the picture. Or, for researchers that are remote, they can access them in our soon-to-be online database of 3D scanned fossils. I hope you've enjoyed this educational video. I'm now going to sit in the corner and think about my life. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want more natural history themed content in the future. Both of those buttons are below. You can also hit it right here. Or wherever it is. I'm going to try to get it right there. <clears throat> Couldn't help but notice that you haven't liked and subscribed yet. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? Go ahead and like and subscribe. Hit that bell while you're at it if you're feeling crazy. Like and subscribe. you haven't liked and subscribed yet.
I want to go home. They don't let me go home until you like and subscribe. It's 7 o'clock. Supposed to go home at 5.30. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs>